I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to discuss the catastrophic famine that continues to unfold in the Horn of Africa. Eastern Africa is currently in the grips of the worst drought in 60 years, affecting 11 million people in Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya. According to the UN, Somalia now faces the highest malnutrition rates in the world, and some 3 million Somalis are in desperate need of immediate emergency aid. The UN estimates that tens of thousands of Somalis have died of drought-related causes in the past few months, and acute malnutrition rates in the country's southern region now exceed 30%. Thousands more are fleeing areas controlled by the Al-Qaeda-affiliated militant group Al-Shabaab, which even in the face of such large-scale human suffering, refuses to allow major humanitarian groups to deliver aid. Some 50,000 Somalis have returned to the capital despite continued violence and instability in search of food and medicine. Others have sought refuge from hunger and warfare in neighboring countries. Nearly 400,000 Somalis have crowded into Kenya's Dadaab refugee camp, a complex designed to house only 90,000 people. Another 9,000 arrive in the camp each week, and thousands of other Somalis continue to flee Ethiopia in search of food. Many, particularly children and the elderly, do not survive the harsh trek. The warning signs of impending disaster have been visible for months, but the international community has been slow to respond. Aid is slowly now beginning to trickle in, however. The UN's World Food Program has begun an emergency airlift of food. The first flight arrived in Mogadishu yesterday, bringing 10 tons of nutritional supplements for children. The World Food Program says that is enough to treat 3,500 malnour malnourished children for one month. Clearly, the need is far greater. The World Food Program plans to increase its efforts in hope of reaching over 2 million people in Somalia's in Somalia south. Likewise, the United States has provided much-needed assistance to 4.4 million drought-affected people in eastern Africa. Since last October, our government has given $383 million in life-saving aid, including 348,000 metric tons of food. Further, this week, the Obama administration announced a further $28 million in emergency assistance for famine relief in Somalia. This aid is critical, and I commend the president for these steps. However, the scale of the, con of the current crisis requires a much greater response, as well as creative solutions tailored to the unique threats posed by Somalia's persistent instability and violence. For example, because Al-Shabaab is a terrorist organization, we continue to impose restrictions on aid organizations delivering assistance to the hard-hit regions under its control. We need to work with these humanitarian groups to ensure that, despite Somalia's continuing warfare and lack of governance, desperately needed aid can reach the most vulnerable men, women, and children. Mr. Speaker, we need to act quickly to fight famine and save lives. We also need to address the long-term underlying causes that have left Somalia's people so vulnerable to drought and malnutrition. Even before the most recent crisis, Somalia was locked in a cycle of warfare, lawlessness, and bitter poverty. One expert recently called Somalia's current plight a, a catastrophic failure of all the systems that people rely on to survive. That's why part of our response must be an investment in resilience and food security. Part of our response must be an effort to address the long-standing violent conflict that has torn Somalia apart. Part of our response must go toward long-term economic development and capacity building. We need to act immediately to ensure that humanitarian aid can reach the millions of Eastern Africans who face imminent malnutrition and starvation that we're watching every day on television. I urge the United States and the international community to immediately scale up efforts to deliver urgent assistance to children and other vulnerable individuals. I yield back.